Hello guys and welcome back to Lead Logics. This is the maximum profit in job scheduling problem from Lead Code. This is a Lead Code hard and the number for this is 1235. So in this problem we are given with n jobs and uh, every job is scheduled from start time i to end time i. So we are given with the start times and the end times array consisting of the start time and the end time of each and every job and uh, each job has also a profit of profit i so we also have a array of profits where profit of i is the profit of job i and uh, we are given with the start time and time and profit arrays and we have to return the maximum profit we can take such that there are no two jobs in a subset with overlapping time range so basically we have to arrange the jobs in such a way that our profit is maximized so let's suppose we have uh, this example one so for example one the job i is starting from uh, first uh, zero at job let's say zero at job will start at zero and end at three and uh, first job will start at two uh, and end at four third job will start at third uh, three and uh, end at five and the the fourth job will start at 3 and end at 6 but we have to see the profit we have to maximize the profit so the maximum profit if we draw the time uh, time range for each and every job it will be like this in the example and we can clearly see that the maximum profit comes when the job 1 and the job 4 are arranged sequentially so let's see how we are going to do this so first of all we have taken the example the same example you see the start time 1 2 3 5 uh, not the same it is a bit different but uh, it is similar and uh, we have uh, end time as 3 5 6 7 and the profit is 50 20 170 so what is the first step that we are going to do so the first step that we are going to do is sorting the jobs and how we are going to sort that sorting in an order uh, of the ending times so we have that array end time this end time so we'll sort the array according to that such that the job with smallest ending time comes first and we are going to create uh, virtually we are going to create some tuples like the tuples will have the end time start time and the profit so the after sorting the tuples become so ending time 3 starting time 1 and profit 50 this is the first job and then the second job is starting time ending time 5 starting time 2 and profit of 20 and then third job is 6 ending time starting time 3 profit of 100 Fourth job ends at 7, starts at 4 and gives a profit of 70. Now we have the job sorted. Now we are we have to create the DP table. And the DP table is always of the n plus 1 size. So since the n is 4 here, we are going to take a DP of 5, size 5. And now we are going to use binary search. And uh, binary search in what format? You might have seen the... Uh, use of uh, finding the upper bound using binary search if you haven't you can watch it on the striver search channel uh, binary search upper bound video uh, he gives a very good explanation so you can see that for that otherwise you can watch the video i will explain in that also so in each for each job we are going to find using binary search if there is a non conflicting job or not and we are going to check two things like if the current job can give us the maximum result out of the previous result or it is the uh, previous result that we are going to use so here we are going to use the dynamic programming so our f let's see how we are going to do so for first job that is 3 150 ending time 3 starting time 1 profit 50 we see that there are no pre previous jobs so we can simply allocate the dp of 1 to 50 
now for the second job we see that the time is actually overlapping it's the first job started at 1 and ended at 3 and this is starting at 2 and ends at 5 so this is overlapping so in this case we have to consider this max of dp1 or dp0 plus 20 so dp of 0 was 0 and dp of 0 plus 20 is 20 and dp of 1 was 50 so which is max so dp of 1 is max so it becomes 50 so dp of 1 becomes 50 now for the third job now the third job uh, ends at 6 and starts at 3 now we see that this does not overlap with the first job okay and uh, so we can allocate it and also we can see that uh, the dp of from this max of dp2 or dp1 plus 100 so dp of 1 plus 100 gives 150 and dp of 2 was 50 and dp of 2 was 50 uh, so we can definitely say that uh, this will give a maximum result this and then the for the fourth job similarly we are going to check which which one gives the maximum and so from here we find out that dp of 2 plus 70 gives the maximum result and we can simply state that the, our answer is this 120 that is the dp of n so we have to simply return the dp of n and that would be our answer so this was the code explanation now let's come to the coding section but before that do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel uh, a like and a subscribe can give a very much support to me so let's start so first of all let us define the number of jobs so number of jobs equal to profit dot length and then we are going to create an array of job so what is this job so we are going to create a custom class or the tuple was what i was going what i was telling you so that tuple is this job and we are going to create this now in a few seconds but before that let me write the other logics so <clears throat> then we are going to iterate and initialize the tuples so this will be number of jobs i plus plus and here we have jobs of i equal to new job and the tuple will be like the end time of i first then this then we have the start time of i and then the profit of i okay now we need to sort it And how we are going to sort it? We are going to use a custom comparator as well. So we are we need we need to sort this jobs array. And for this we need to write comparator dot comparing int. So this we need to write. I think yes it is. I think it is correct. I am not making a mistake. And this is the proper syntax job dot end time. So this is how we write to sort uh, basically tuples. These are actually classes. This every job particularly is a instance of a class. Now we need to write the uh, define the DP table. So this will be of the job plus one size
so now we need to extract the values from each job so that's what we are going to do so we have extracted the end time And the profit so we need to find now the last non conflicting job index so which was the last uh, job that was non conflicting with the current job so for that we are going to use the upper bound of the job array and we'll give the pass the ith index along with the start time value so anything that ends before the start time of the current job uh, will be a non conflicting job so let's see so from this we can get the latest non conflicting job as well now we need to only define dp of i plus 1 will be dp of uh, mat dot max that will be dp of either i or dp of i minus 1 plus the current jobs profit or actually this will be last non conflicting job I'm going to simply copy this. Big variable means, and then we have the profit value. You can avoid using such big uh, variable names, but this uh, makes the code more readable and. Uh, Although it will be difficult to handle, but the interviewer might like the concept of writing very clear variable names, so that whenever someone else reads your code, he he doesn't find it difficult to understand what's written. So now we have defined the main uh, logic. now we need to divide, define the first the upper bound and then this jobs class so let's define the upper bound first so the upper bound consists of the jobs job array job the end index and the We'll set the low equal to zero. We'll set the high equal to the end index, <clears throat> and then we'll try to find the upper bound. So till the time low is less than high, mid equal to low plus high by two. And if the job dot mid dot end time is less than or equal to target time, that means this this particular value is a possible answer. So we'll uh, keep it in the low because in end the end we are going to return the low, so that's why we are storing the answer in the low. So mid plus one. and why are we doing mid plus 1 uh, because now we know that low is a answer but there can be a possibility that there may be answers in between the mid to the high so that's why we are going to again iterate 
and otherwise what will be the case otherwise we will put the high equal to mid and here we can return the low so this is the upper bound let's define the class as well this class consists of a end time start time define the constructor so this dot end time equal to the end time this dot start time equal to start time and this dot profit equal to profit so I think we are done with the code. Let's try to submit it for the sample test cases. So this will be in capital. So it run fine. Let's run for the hidden test cases as well. It passes for the hidden test cases as well with a good time complexity and a good memory complexity. So the time complexity for this solution is n log n because we are iterating in the array and for every time we are using a binary search upper bound that takes log n so the time complexity begins n log n. And the space complexity is O of n because we are using a dp. So yes. I hope you understood the logic. You can also check the C++, Python and the JavaScript solution by going to the solutions panel and checking this solution post. This is my solution. You can find the intuition, the approach, entire approach written down here with the notes, complexity, the Java code, C++ code, Python code, JavaScript code. And yes, do remember me to upload. I hope you liked the video, understood the logic. Do like, share, subscribe the video. It will show me your support guys. Thank you for watching the video. Have a nice day.